All right, today we're going to start section 9.2. We're going to be talking about the unit circle and the trig functions and how they relate to the unit circle and using the unit circle. Um, so first, let's come up with what is the equation of the unit circle. So write down the equation of the unit circle. Pause the video and pause it when you think you got it. All right, so if you remember, our general equation for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared where hk is the center, r is the radius. So in this case, the unit circle is centered at 0, 0, and it has a radius of 1. So our equation of the unit circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. All right, here is our unit circle completely filled out. Uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time or really go over um, how we get these angles and these values. I did that at the beginning of the year, if you recall. Uh, if you want to refresh your memory, you can go back and watch that video again or look back in your notes. If you do have questions on it, I can answer those in class. But I don't want to spend a lot of time right now uh, going through that. Remember, it basically just relates to our 30, 45, and our 30, 60, 90 triangle and our 45, 45, 90 triangle. Um, and then the understanding the fact that the radius is 1. Okay, so now let's look at um, definitions of trigonometric functions. So if we let t be a real number and let x, y be a point on the unit circle corresponding to t, so in this case t is our angle, then I know sine of t equals y, cosine of t equals x, tangent of t is y over x, x cannot equal 0, otherwise tangent is undefined, cosecant of t is the reciprocal of sine of t, so it's 1 over y, if y is 0 then the cosecant is undefined. Uh, the secant of t is 1 over x because it's the reciprocal of cosine and obviously if x is 0 then the, co or then the secant is undefined and the cotangent which is the reciprocal of tangent is going to be x over y y cannot equal 0 otherwise cotangent is undefined so if we understand this then it leads us to a really great realization that any point x y on the unit circle can be thought of as cosine of t sine of t so for example, if I look back at this unit circle, I know at an angle of pi sixth or 30 degrees, the sine is one half, or the sine of pi sixth is one half, and the cosine of pi sixth is root three over two. And so on, I can go around the unit circle, and it's really easy for me to figure out the sine and the cosine values. Okay, so using that knowledge, I want you to evaluate the following trig functions at these given angles. So pause the video um, and then come back when you think you have your answers. Okay, so here for tangent of 3 pi fourths, it equals negative 1. You do not need to show this work, but I'm just showing where it comes from. So root 2 over 2 is the y value, negative root 2 over 2 is the x value. If I divide those, I get negative 1. The cosecant of 11 pi sixth is the reciprocal of the y value. The y value at 11 pi 6 is negative 1 half. The reciprocal of negative 1 half is negative 2. The secant of 4 pi thirds is the reciprocal of the x value at 4 pi thirds. The x value at 4 pi thirds is negative 1 half. So the secant of 4 pi thirds is negative 2. And then the cosine of pi is the x value at pi. The x value at pi is negative 1. Next we're going to talk about the domain and range of the sine and the cosine functions. Now here, this is where we have to be really careful to pay attention to. Uh, we don't necessarily, we're not necessarily talking about domain and range as saying x and y. Remember, our general definition is domain is an input, range is an output. So we want to make sure we understand that. So for sine, we'll continue with using sine of t. The domain is going to be all real numbers. So we know that because I can plug any value in for t and I will get an output for sine. So it doesn't matter what I plug in, positive, negative, fraction, irrational, any real number that I plug in there, I will get an output. The range is going to be, well, what are those possible output values? Well, remember, sine is the y values on the unit circle. Well, what's the largest y value? It's positive 1. What's the smallest y value? It's negative 1. So the range is going to be negative 1 to 1, including negative 1 and 1. And again, that's because...
on the unit circle, negative 1 and 1 are the lowest and highest y values. Now let's look at cosine. Cosine of t. Well, for the domain, it's going to be the same as sine. Uh, we can plug in whatever we want for uh, t. doesn't matter. Positive, negative, irrational, and we will get an output value. The range... Well, here again, we want to think about the, the output of cosine is the x values on the unit circle. And the x values range from negative 1 to 1. So the range is going to be So the range is negative 1 to 1, including negative 1 and 1, and that's because on the unit circle, uh, the x values go between negative 1 and 1, including negative 1 and 1. All right, now we're going to talk about the idea of a function being periodic. So what makes a function periodic? Well, in general, we think of it as it's something that it's going to repeat, continually repeat, um, or sometimes... We can use the word cyclic, uh, but in general, a function, is a function f is periodic if there exists a positive real number c such that f of t plus c equals f of t for all t in the domain of f. The smallest number c for which f is periodic is called the period of f. So that is our formal definition of a periodic function. Okay, so what is the period of sine, cosine, and tangent? Well, so now we want to think about what is the smallest number that we know the cycle will repeat. Um, and so for sine, it's going to be 2 pi. Now, there are values, um, there are output values of sine that will occur multiple times before a cycle of 2 pi. However, to complete the cycle, we have to go around 2 pi before um, the entire cycle starts over. Cosine is the same. It's also going to be 2 pi. However, tangent is different. Tangent's shorter. It has a standard period of pi. And you can see this about tangent if you look at the um, y over x values on the unit circle. The first quadrant is the same as the third quadrant, and the second quadrant is the same as the fourth quadrant for tangent only. Uh, and so that's why the period is just going to be pi. So in general, if I have the sine of t plus 2 pi n, or the cosine of t plus 2 pi n, that's going to equal the cosine of t or the sine of t. If I have the tangent of t plus pi n, that's going to equal the tangent of t. And then you can see the same is true for cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Cosecant and secant have a period of 2 pi. Cotangent has a period of pi. So I want you to use the period to evaluate the tangent of 17 pi, the cosecant of 13 pi over 3, and the cosecant of negative 15 pi over 6. So pause the video and unpause it when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so the tangent of 17 pi, uh, understanding this idea of how the period works, we could rewrite that as the tangent of 16 pi plus pi, which is then telling us that it's the same thing as the tangent of pi, which is zero. The secant of 13 pi thirds is the same as the secant of 4 pi plus pi thirds, so it's the same as the secant of pi thirds, which is 2. The cosecant of negative 15 pi sixths is the same as the cosecant of negative 5 pi halves, so we can actually just reduce this first, and then this becomes the cosecant of negative 4 pi plus 3 pi halves, which is the cosecant of 3 pi halves, which is going to be negative 1. Now, on a test or a quiz, you wouldn't have to show all of this work necessarily if I said evaluate the tangent of 17 pi or the secant of 13 pi thirds or the cosecant of negative 15 pi sixths, but the point of the work is to make sure you understand why you get the answer that you do. Alright, now we're going to talk about even and odd trig functions. So remember, how do we determine if a function is even or odd? Well, it's even if f of t 
equals f of negative t. And remember, graphically, this would reflect over the y-axis. It's odd if f of negative t equals negative f of t and this graphically would reflect over the origin. So we're not going to do the graphs today, we're going to get to the graphs in a few days, um, but we can still deal or understand with even and odd trig functions. So which ones are even and which ones are odd? Well, cosine is even and secant is even, and sine, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent are odd. So if we understand that, then these properties are all going to be true. So now I want, you, you, I want you to use the value of the trig function to evaluate the indicated functions. So pause the video and try to figure out uh, what is the sine of t, the cosecant of t, the cosine of pi minus t, and the cosine of t plus pi, given this information and this information. Unpause when you're ready to check your work. Okay, so hopefully with the sine this was pretty easy. If sine of negative t equals 3 eighths, then I know sine of t has to equal negative 3 eighths. I know cosine of t has to equal negative 8 thirds because it's the reciprocal of sine. Uh, and I get that again because I know sine of negative t equals negative sine of t, so therefore negative sine of t would equal positive 3 eighths, and that's how I know sine of t would equal negative 3 eighths. Now this one's maybe a little bit more difficult, so cosine of t equals 4 fifths. Now the key thing is to recognize that this is a positive value. Therefore t has to be in either the first or the fourth quadrant because that's where the x values are positive on the unit circle. So for instance, if this is t, then this would be pi minus t. They would draw the same triangle because these would be congruent angles, so I know the value would be exactly the same, except for it's going to be negative. The other possible drawing would be if t is in the fourth quadrant, then this would be pi minus t. Again, these would be congruent triangles, the red and the blue, therefore this would be negative four-fifths. I can do something similar to figure out that t plus pi is also going to be negative four-fifths. Uh, and then just to re-emphasize and to show you this triangle that I keep referring to but not drawing, is if I draw this triangle here as a right triangle, it's going to be congruent to this triangle here. Now I know my picture is not perfect, um, but that's how these trig functions are going to work. And so I know that cosine is going to have the same value for this angle in red as it would for this angle in blue, except for since this angle in red is in the fourth quadrant, the x value here, which is cosine, remember, is going to be the x value of this point, is going to be uh, positive, whereas here it's going to be negative. All right, we have and just to show you quickly one of the uh, drawings for the t plus pi. So again, if I have uh, you know, some angle here, that if this is t, well I know then that this would be t plus pi. And so, you know, if I draw my triangle, this triangle, and this triangle, well they're going to have the same ratio um, for cosine because this angle is congruent to this angle or in this case it's, we can even see that they're vertical angles. The only difference now is cosine is going to be negative here where it's going to be positive here. Alright, we have one more example to do but I don't want to rush through it so that's going to be in part two.